Who's this guy look like? See how he puts on that tie? Look at that face. Listen to that voice. <laughs> this car is like a marriage, you know? It looked better without me in it. <laughs> I'm Dave Fields, and I'm the curator of this collection. Look at this 1957 450S. This is a Maserati, a racing car of the late 50s vintage. This would be like something you would see at perhaps Le Mans or uh, uh, Mille Miglia. And a Rodney Dangerfield fan, as I'm sure you are. And uh, we're just, uh, thought we'd have a little bit of fun with the cars and with my pal Rodney today. So I hope I didn't give him any disrespect by doing that. But uh, listen to that dual overhead cam V8 engine. This car, however, along with five more classics, are, like Dave's Rodney Dangerfield impression, recreations. Each car is a fully functioning aluminum bodied revival of a historically relevant vehicle, handcrafted in Argentina to the client's taste. Oh, baby. How am I ever going to remember the brakes out here? Hey, what we got here is a BMW 507, and I want to tell you that if you were to go to an auction and buy something like this, it'd be way over a million dollars. Hey, my wife, <laughs> she buys me this car for my birthday. Spends two and a half million dollars on it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Turns out it was made in Argentina just about five years ago. This car was built in Argentina, exact specifications, all aluminum, the correct materials, all BMW running gear, $250,000 here in the United States. We've already brought it in. She paid $250,000 for it. I mean, no respect, no respect at all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> a lot of European cars ended up to, in Argentina and South America. So they found this engine, standard transmission. They found all the components, repaired them, and then built the body around it. Hey, it ain't my body, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> What we have here is just a beautiful little Alfa Romeo. Okay, this is a late 50s, early 60s Alfa Romeo. Disc brakes in the front, drum in the back, tubular space frame. I mean, this baby just purrs like a kitten. Hey, not like the kitten I stepped on the other day, you know what I mean? And it has a dual overhead cam four cylinder uh, Alfa Romeo engine, and this engine is spectacular and very interesting because it was a prototype racing engine that they found in Argentina. An exact engine like you would find. Have the Weber carburetors here on the side. Uh, one carburetor per cylinder. You can see the framing down in there. It's just absolutely stunning. Look at those carburetors on the side. Man, that sucked, that would suck more money out of my wallet than my ex-wife. All three of them. <laughs> Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? <laughs> Beautiful wood steering wheel. Look at those instruments. Damn, I wish my mother taught me to read. These cars were handcrafted back in the day and they're handcrafted again now. No respect, I'm telling you. It's awful. Whoa, baby, look at those lines. Hey, this is a Stutz. Stutz was an American automobile company from Indianapolis, Indiana. Who? My uh, ex fiance was from Indianapolis, Indiana. <laughs> Forget that. <laughs> Six feet from the hood to the windshield. We're talking a straight eight here. Two spark plugs per cylinder. That's 16 spark plugs. The parts counter guy just loves it when I show up. All aluminum construction, again, all Stutz drivetrain, straight eight or inline eight, 
that's a wood dash. It's made out of real wood. And again, this car was made just in the last few years down in Argentina. This baby handles, oh, it handles like a Bridget Bardot, I'll tell you. And again, instead of being millions of dollars, this little baby is around $250,000. Hey, Rodney, we got some straight men with us. Okay. What's your name? And what's the other straight man's name? Uh, Gilbert Science. Okay, this, this is another Argentine car, aluminum body, and it's all Chrysler drivetrain and uh, chassis, uh, springs, uh, drum brakes all around, and the drums were, were turned by hand in Argentina to give it a racing uh, cooling uh, effectiveness. Got the shocks out there. Hey, wait. Hey. Wait, effectiveness? Effectiveness, <laughs> yes, you know. Got to have some effectiveness. <laughs> you got to have that, yes. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. What about this uh, oil wall over the car? Why, why does it have oil wall over the body? Well, this, they, they painted this to look like it has uh, just finished a race, and it, it's kind of fun. It's, it's all brand new body but uh in all brand new paint but uh hey some of us don't like to wax cars you know so this car never needs washed or waxed the dirtier it gets the better so we pull these back early cars had these uh, leather straps holding the hood down because clips can can uh, come undone and there we have hey, beautiful know, little chrysler nice looking motor there I think everybody should have one in their car. I've, I've got one in mine at home. I, I take it out and use it every once in a while. So you said everybody should have a motor in their car. Uh, right. Why? Well, a rubber band wouldn't work. <laughs> hey, I'm going to handle the jokes here, you know. Oh, look at this. All aluminum. You don't find any Bondo or fiberglass in this baby. <laughs> Ooh, what a sound. Can you get in that vehicle? Yeah, you can. This is easy. I can, you can. Yeah, I can. Even Freddie could. It. What'd you break? No, the, we, we... Knocked the mirror we, off. Yeah, we haven't bolted that on yet. Just don't know if he'll make it or not. He's got a heck of a big belly on him. Don't you see that? Poor feller. Got to ask you a question. When's the last time you saw an Auburn boat tail racer? And here we go. This has an Auburn straight eight in it. And that's a custom manifold. It's a Swan manifold patented in 1928. But it's a downdraft carburetor in 1928 instead of an updraft. Oh, we're going to start this baby up. <laughs> hey, there it is. <laughs> That mirror, I'm ugly. <laughs> will not be anything like a modern car. Well, you know, this is a lightweight racer. So we just keep it all thin, especially with a little bit of weight in here like me. Cars did not have turn signals until the very late 1930s. But in modern traffic and Today we like to add those safety devices.
Now all the great movie people would have similar cars to this. They like the fast cars. So Cary Grant, Clark Gable, Rudolph Valentino, Charlie Chaplin, the Marx Brothers, all had the latest and fastest cars of the day. So I'm experiencing the world. I'm experiencing the world just like the Hollywood greats did. See if I can get out of here. Hey, honey, bring a crane. <laughs> I just don't know if he'll make it or not. He's got a heck of a big belly on him. Don't you see that? Poor feller. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. <laughs> get the Vaseline. <laughs> oh. Wow. I just feel sorry for anybody built like that. I get the Ooh. <laughs> it, would, it would have to be a pity. These are not really, I'm not acting. These are hard to get out. <laughs> Look at him. No, maybe you shouldn't. You know, it's hard work to be stylish. Anything for my audience, anything. <laughs> You've really screwed me up because these guys had an image of me as a, as a bum. Well, don't worry. We still think you're a bum. Hey, I'm going to handle the jokes here, you know. Oh. <laughs>